Hi everyone, this is Jason Zak from Nathaniel School of Music. In this rhythm tutorial, we are going to practice reading rhythms and not just reading them, reading them in order to play, practice our respective instrument, also to improvise, compose, develop riffs, licks and other motifs, work with lyrics. So you can do a lot of things when you read rhythms. We have done a few reading rhythms lessons on our YouTube channel. We leave a few in, our, in a playlist, so do check them out. It's called All Things Rhythm. However, in this lecture, we are going to focus on looking at every single 16th note rhythm, which I think is the big fish to catch when it comes to rhythm because it will include some of the tougher ones you will come across, not just to listen to and catch on to, but also for your eyes to see in the notation paper. So I'm going to introduce you to a way of writing it, which is a binary list. So it will be a binary list of every single 16th note rhythm permutation. And in this lesson, we are going to do within the beat. So in one beat, we'll try and look at every possible pattern or every possible beat structure using musical information to the depth of 16th notes. Okay, then we are going to look at a practice method to combine the normal patterns or the normal motifs with the more groovy or the more catchy or the tougher ones. So we'll do the easy with the tough or the trivial with the groovy as I call it. And then we are going to combine beat by beat using a rather simple poetic framework where you're trying to take one piece and merge it with the other piece. If you think about it, poetry is very rhythmic in nature. You're always thinking of some kind of a rhythmic phrase or a rhythmic meter when you're reciting a poem as well. So before we get started, it'll be awesome if you can consider heading over to our Patreon page and downloading my handwritten notes not only for this le lecture, but pretty much for everything we've done. You can easily search in Patreon for whichever lesson or you can go to a YouTube video in the description. The link will be there. And if you go to Patreon and subscribe for as low as five US dollars a month, you'll get everything listed. There are filters, there are categories and you can bump up the subscription to have virtual live lessons with me to have workshops to get course material from all of my classes and a lot more so uh, do consider patreon and there's a subscribe button and a bell icon for regular notifications on our youtube channel it'll be nice if you can hit that as well okay let's get cracking so first off let's look at what a 16th note is doing to a beat a 16th note or a semi quaver is dividing the beat into four units now those units can either be equally divided or straight division as we call it so that will be something like one e and three and we say we could chant out one e and a two e and a three e. those are the syllables you can use one e and a two e and a three e and a four e. You can even say maybe some conical words like takadimi, takajunu, takadimi, takajunu. And a nice way to start practicing it, the way I like to do it is to take a chord. So D major or D minor and add one note to the chord on the piano or any instrument really. So that one note which you add could end up being a major second which is an E, a perfect fourth, which is a G, a minor sixth, which is an A sharp, also known as B flat. Officially, minor six will be B flat. Or you can even do a major six. In some cases, to make the major or the minor chord more exotic or more spicy, instead of the usual major second, you can go, you can go minor second. Instead of the perfect fourth, you can do the tritone. So basically a triad will have three notes and you're adding this one extra note. So you can add the major second, minor second, perfect fourth, augmented fourth or diminished fifth or tritone, minor sixth, major sixth. And you can do all of this even with a minor chord. So if you take D minor, Flat 2 makes it very Phrygian. Major 2nd with that E. Perfect 4th. 
tritone diminish fifth and then you can do a flat six minor sixth or you can do a major sixth so with that ecosystem you can take a set of four semi quavers and roll one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two e and a three e and a four e one e and a two e and you can do whichever combo you prefer e and a two. if you like minor or major so that's a major chord d major with a flattened six that's b flat that's a, a still a flat in 6 but over the minor chord da 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 versus da 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 okay so that's about what we are going to do on the piano now coming to forming the rhythm patterns now what are 16th note rhythm patterns it will basically be the 16th notes but with rests as well as notes or hits as you could call them or notes and rests so a simple strategy would be to look at all of this in a binary way and figure out places or spots in the beat where you're going to play and spots in the beat where you're not going to play and to start off with you have play all which is 1e and a and the places or the beat structure would be 1e and a 2e and a 3 and what's the next most obvious one don't play all of them which will be 1e and a 2e and i am literally playing nothing so let's combine 1e and a with nothing 1e and a 2e and a 3e and a 4e and a 1e and a 2e and so every alternate i'm basically doing nothing and instead of doing nothing you can also tie this on so 1e and a 2e and a 3e and a using a tie to a crotchet if you want the sound to linger or you can use your pedal 1e and a 2e and a 3e and a 4e so i call these as trivial patterns because we are playing pretty much either at all the beats or none of the beats or at the down beats or at the important beats not at the off beats and we are not having combinations yet so that will make it groovy combinations between playing and not playing notes and rests so the trivial options would be 1e and uh, nothing where well, also be trivial what's another trivial you just play on the down beat 2 3 so now you're not really dividing the beat but you could argue that you're still dividing the beat by doing play don't play 0 0 0 tick 0 0 or tick x x x you know so on the beat on the down beat 1 e and 2 e and so e and is absent in the binary way you can write it as 1 0 0 0 so that will essentially be a crotchet or a quarter note which is on the beat but then doesn't go inside the beat so 1 e and a 2 and 3 e and a 4 and still trivial 4 1 e and a 2 3 e and a 4 and now the last trivial would end up being just the ands so you're not really playing 16th notes instead you're playing eighth notes so that'll be 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 so the four trivials all four in and these are 16th note rhythms but trivial all four only one at the down beat that'll be and then eighth notes 1e e and a 2e e and a 3e e and a 4e e and a 1e e and a 2e e and a 3e e and a 4e e and 1e e and a 2e e and a 1e e and a 2 and of course 1e e. i'm doing it i'm doing a crotchet rest so these are all the trivials now to form the other patterns or the groovy patterns you could plot out an entire binary set like 2 to the power 4 equals 16 and like your first ever computer science class you will write down zeros and ones basically your binary digits and you get to 16 so 2 to the power 4 will 
equal 16 is 2 into 2 into 2 into 2 if you didn't know that now that will give you 16 options but it won't give you a, a framework to practice so what i would then recommend is break it down which are the phrases which go three in and one out or playing three and not playing one so that would be four in number you could do one e and a and knock off the e so that will be originally one e and a two e and a three e without the e one and a two and a three and a four and a one e to e and a three e and a four e so you need to really feel that e with a lot of excitement even though you're not playing it one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e Two. And then what else? You can knock off, we've knocked off the E. Let's knock off the E. Uh. That's the last subdivision. One E and two E and E. Uh, and uh. not to be confused with a triplet. The tuck it. This is not the triplet. This is not dividing by three. This is one E and E, uh, two E and E, uh, three E and E, uh, four E and E, 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 E. And then don't play at the one or the downbeat. One E, two three four one two three four then don't play at the end so one e and two e and three e and four e and one e and so let's do that again on the piano i'm just going to take a major chord for now because three notes are enough to demonstrate play three and don't play one not playing at the E. So there's a rest at the E. Now you don't, just because you don't play E doesn't mean you have to choke it or staccato it at the E. You can just continue the one. It could even be dealt with as a quaver going into two semi-quavers. So <clears throat> that's how I prefer to play it. But you might have to read it as as a rest so you can observe the rest if the song desires or you can just hold it then one e and without the a uh. no on beats at all to feel that you need a pulse in the left hand that's what I like to do and now without the and Just to compare it with all in, the tri the trivial with all four semi-quavers in. So I'll do the semi-quavers all in. And then this, so you get the contrast. Then maybe uh, the all semi-quavers with the one E end. Again, you could look at it as two semi-quavers followed by a quaver or three semi-quavers and then a sixteenth note or a semi-quaver rest. Now let's do the not playing at the one or the downbeat. And then finally... That's not playing at the ends. Okay, so we've done play three and don't play one. What if we play two and don't play two? Because you have only four slots. So the permutations where you play two subdivisions and don't play two subdivisions would be, well, one would be in the trivial category where you do one and the end. So... One E and a two E and a. So I've put it in the trivial category. However, what about this? 
where you're hitting at the one and the a uh. one e uh, uh. If I compare this with two quavers, I'm just going in thirds. Always important to compare a trivial with the one you're not so sure of or the one you need to study. So. And just like that, now I've hit one E and a two. E. Now I can hit one E, two E, three. So that's like a semi quaver with a dotted quaver. Pum 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 tum tum pum pum pum. So versus the other one. And now. With the trivial just for comparison. Maybe do it on minor. And so on. Now these are patterns where we are starting on the downbeat or on the one. Let's look at a few examples where we don't start on the one. What if we play just the E's and the E's? One E, E. Uh, so that'll be very exciting for the mind and body, isn't it? So that'll be. Uh, but to feel it, you need to do it with a trivial. So I'm doing a crotchet and then this. Maybe a, a two quavers and then the, this one where we hit at the one and the and and then we hit at the E and the E uh in the next beat. So one E and a two E and a uh, slowly one E and a two E and a uh, three E and a four E and a uh, the and a two E and a uh, okay. Okay, now let's do two cluster rhythms which are pending. That would be one E and two E and I'm just doing all the binary permutations. So one E and two E and three E and you could look at it as two semi quavers in a bunch, or don't play at the one, play the E, and then and a could be a quaver or a semi quaver with a semi quaver or a sixteen note dress. One E and two E and I'm trying to do the the trivial pattern which will be four semi quavers in this case a chord pattern would work nicely or a power chord phrase on a guitar this one Lastly, one e and a two and a ta, two do ta, two so one e and a two e and a three e and a. Now, that's a quaver rest, and then two semi quavers. So let's do that with a trivial. Okay, let's go over all the play to, don't play to, as I'm calling them. First of all, the trivial. 
two and three and four and one and now dotted quaver with a semi quaver now semi quaver with a dotted quaver now hitting at the e's and the ers only uh, the, the the two semi quaver points <coughs> now the clusters of semi quavers e and our uh, binary rhythm permutations with just playing two and not playing two so the last set of binary permutations where it's 16th note bass thereby we divide by 4 at the very max would be play one and don't play three now we've already done a case study where we play one and don't play three that's playing on the down beat so that's one e and er so where e and er is off what about the other options maybe just whack the end one e Two e and 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 one e and two e and three e and four one e and two. Very exciting. If you're playing reggae, you'll have to be aware of this hit point. One e and two. And now let's do go over just hitting the e's. One e to two. Two e and three e and four e and one e, or maybe just the us. Again, practice it in context. So, let's do all the four semi quavers and then these uh, hit one miss three rhythm patterns. So that's all in. So that's only hitting at the one. Now let's do and. high d is showcasing that hit so next e maybe the o so Okay, so we've covered every single sixteenth note permutation, rhythmically speaking, when it comes to dividing the beat by four, which are sixteenth notes, and the the logic or the grouping or the categorization we've done is based on trivial, which is the easy stuff: four semi quavers, one crotchet. nothing which is a, re a crotchet rest and then two quavers then we've looked at play 3 miss 1 play 2 miss 2 play 1 miss 3 uh, so play 3 miss 1 there are four play 2 miss 2 in my notes there are six but then the one is trivial so i've just kept five there uh, play 1 miss 3 there are four i've uh, removed one because one is trivial so that's four 
plus 5 equals 9 plus uh, 3 which is 12 and then 4 trivial 12 plus 4 16 these are the 16 16th note beat patterns you have to practice now to make them creative i've already told you to practice them with the trivial rhythms okay not only creative to make them understandable in the first place otherwise just hitting ease would be like you know you're trying to catch a a, a, a mosquito or something so what we can then do is take probably a trivial or take any two categories so i'm calling it maybe category a as trivial category b as three in one out and play with them poetically speaking so that would be maybe an a a b b that's two a so let's take an a which is a trivial and then a b b could be a maybe so now you have an entire bar of music made out for you So let's do B B A A. So, so that could be a. So it's ultimately B B A A would be category B where you play three miss one alongside category A which is trivial. So you can pick any of those trivials. So you're merging two categories two rhythm patterns of each category so let's try triple a b perhaps so i'm doing a as three beats of four semiquavers and to couple it i'm going to go into maybe category c this time instead of doing a a a b all the time i'll do a a a c where i can pick a play to miss two pattern so E, 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 uh, at the uh, C. A, A, C, C. Maybe I can do a B, A, A, A as well. Come back to category B and maybe do this one. That's three of one E and a two E and a three E and a four trivial. One E and the other one. Okay, let's now do everyone's favorite band, ABBA, A-B-B-A. So what will A be? A-B-B-A now. So... And one E and will be trivial. One E and a two E and a two. And maybe the last trivial which is A can be nothing. Okay, so I hope you get the idea. You can even do BAB, which is B-A-A-B, and the, the, the journey goes on. Now, I would recommend you to always start pairing up your rhythms with a trivial and then something else. However, you can even group any of the categories together as you gain more and more confidence with the practice. So the goal for you in this tutorial would be to read every single 16th note rhythm pattern and to be able to combine them with each other and then when you read them in an actual score or even when you're composing and if you feel that you're trapped into a certain sound or a certain 
piece of music or a certain phrase you can break out the phrase break out of the phrase by figuring out what the phrase is in the first place so if you are continuously playing an endless set of 16th notes or just quavers and you feel it's not rhythmically interesting yet maybe think what are, what are you playing write it down and then see okay i have 16 permutations maybe i can go somewhere else so it could be a good tool to compose to improvise and to even read sheet music better instead of going to the sheet music or going to the source or buying a reading rhythms book or doing exercises on that front i think you can do it yourself put it all on one piece of paper as i have done in my notes which you can get a copy of and then have a practice session of about half an hour where you just look at the piece of paper and decide what you want to do in that practice session do you want to write lyrics do you want to compose a melody do you want to play a bass line are you a bass player do you want to do a chord arpeggio pattern or whatever it is you can do a lot of things by just looking at a rhythm pattern right and we leave some more ri- ri- right and we leave some more reading rhythms lessons in the description do also consider checking out the all things rhythm playlist and if you want to learn rhythm in a much more structured way you can consider our video courses which can be found on nathaniel schools website you can also consider joining me and learning with our school in a 6 month semester with live music classes hope you found the lesson useful don't forget to hit that subscribe turn on the bell icon for notifications and i will catch you in the next one cheers